July 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 19 and 20 from the Old Testament. When King Jehoshaphat of Judah returned home safely to Jerusalem, the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, confronted him. He said to King Jehoshaphat, Is it right to help the wicked and be an ally of those who oppose the Lord? Because you have done this, the Lord is angry with you. Nevertheless, you have done some good things. You removed the Asherah poles from the land, and you were determined to follow the Lord. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem. He went out among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and encouraged them to follow the Lord God of their ancestors. He appointed judges throughout the land and in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He told the judges, Be careful what you do, for you are not judging for men but for the Lord, who will be with you when you make judicial decisions. Respect the Lord and make careful decisions. For the Lord, our God, disapproves of injustice, partiality, and bribery. In Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat appointed some Levites, priests, and Israelite family leaders to judge on behalf of the Lord and to settle disputes among the residents of Jerusalem. He commanded them, Carry out your duties with respect for the Lord, with honesty and with pure motives. Whenever your countrymen who live in the cities bring a case before you, whether it involves a violent crime or other matters related to the law, commandments, rules, and regulations, warn them that they must not sin against the Lord. If they fail to do so, God will be angry with you and your colleagues. But if you obey, you will be free of guilt. You will report to Amariah, the chief priest, in all matters pertaining to the Lord's law, and to Zebediah, son of Ishmael, the leader of the family of Judah, in all matters pertaining to the king. The Levites will serve as officials before you. Confidently carry out your duties. May the Lord be with those who do well. Later, the Moabites and Ammonites, along with some of the Meunites, attacked Jehoshaphat. Messengers arrived and reported to Jehoshaphat, A huge army is attacking you from the other side of the Dead Sea from the direction of Edom. Look, they are in Hazazon Tamer, that is, in Gedi. Jehoshaphat was afraid, so he decided to seek the Lord's advice. He decreed that all Judah should observe a fast. The people of Judah assembled to ask for the Lord's help. They came from all the cities of Judah to ask for the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem at the Lord's temple in front of the new courtyard. He prayed, O Lord God of our ancestors, you are the God who lives in heaven and rules over all the kingdoms of the nations. You possess strength and power. No one can stand against you. Our God, you drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it as a permanent possession to the descendants of your friend Abraham. They settled down in it and built in it a temple to honor you, saying, If disaster comes on us in the form of military attack, judgment, plague, or famine, we will stand in front of this temple before you, for you are present in this temple. We will cry out to you for help in our distress so that you will hear and deliver us. Now the Ammonites, Moabites, and men from Mount Seir are coming. When Israel came from the land of Egypt, you did not allow them to invade these lands. They bypassed them and did not destroy them. Look how they are repaying us. They came to drive us out of our allotted land which you assigned to us. Our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless against this huge army that attacks us. We don't know what we should do. We look to you for help. All the men of Judah were standing before the Lord along with their infants, wives, and children. Then in the midst of the assembly, the Lord's Spirit came upon Jechaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael, son of Mattaniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph. He said, Pay attention, all you people of Judah, residents of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says to you. Don't be afraid and don't panic because of this huge army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow march down against them as they come up the ascent of Ziz. 
you will find them at the end of the ravine in front of the desert of Jeruel. You will not fight in this battle. Take your position, stand, and watch the Lord deliver you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid and don't panic. Tomorrow, march out toward them. The Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face toward the ground, and all the people of Judah and the residents of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord and worshipped him. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites got up and loudly praised the Lord God of Israel. Early the next morning they marched out to the desert of Tekoa. When they were ready to march, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Listen to me, you people of Judah and residents of Jerusalem. Trust in the Lord your God and you will be safe. Trust in the message of his prophets and you will win. He met with the people and appointed musicians to play before the Lord and praise his majestic splendor. As they marched ahead of the warriors, they said, Give thanks to the Lord, for his loyal love endures. When they began to shout and praise, the Lord suddenly attacked the Ammonites, Moabites, and men from Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites attacked the men from Mount Seir and annihilated them. When they had finished off the men of Seir, they attacked and destroyed one another. When the men of Judah arrived at the observation post overlooking the desert and looked at the huge army, they saw dead bodies on the ground. There were no survivors. Jehoshaphat and his men went to gather the plunder. They found a huge amount of supplies, clothing, and valuable items. They carried away everything they could. There was so much plunder. It took them three days to haul it off. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Berica, where they praised the Lord. So that place is called the Valley of Berica to this very day. Then all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them. The Lord had given them reason to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem to the sound of stringed instruments and trumpets and proceeded to the temple of the Lord. All the kingdoms of the surrounding lands were afraid of God when they heard how the Lord had fought against Israel's enemies. Jehoshaphat's kingdom enjoyed peace. His God made him secure on every side. Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king and he reigned for 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. He followed in his father Asa's footsteps and was careful to do what the Lord approved. However, the high places were not eliminated. The people were still not devoted to the God of their ancestors. The rest of the events of Jehoshaphat's reign from start to finish are recorded in the annals of Jehu, son of Hanani, which are included in the scroll of the kings of Israel. Later, King Jehoshaphat of Judah made an alliance with King Ahaziah of Israel, who did evil. They agreed to make large sea-going merchant ships. They built the ships in Ezion Geber. Eliezer, son of Dodavahu from Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, Because you made an alliance with Ahaziah, the Lord will shatter what you have made. The ships were wrecked and unable to go to sea. God, what a fabulous message. Oh my goodness, what a fabulous message. Don't panic. Don't be afraid. Everyone listening to this video right now can understand what you're saying. We've all been in that situation where we're worrying and we're fussing and we're stirring up things. And, and all of our focus, all of our attention, all of our efforts, all of our energy is going to a situation and we're trying to solve it. Perhaps we're trying to solve it with prayer, but we're trying to solve it. Um, and it's captured so much of our heart, so much of our mind, so much of our time. And you say, don't be afraid and don't panic. In fact, why don't you just be quiet and watch me work? <laughs> what an amazing message, God. Be quiet. Let me work. <laughs> God, I am so sorry that we constantly try and interfere with with you. We constantly try and interfere with your plans, with your will. And somehow we think that we can do things better. 
We need to remember more often, don't be afraid and don't panic. I've got this. Would you please get out of the way? Because I've got this. Could you watch me work? I've got this. <laughs> and then I love it. Once the people got that, and Jehoshaphat got that and also reminded the people that they got that. Then he says, and I'm going to appoint musicians and we're going to sing and we're going to dance and we're going to worship God going into battle because we have no worries. We have no cares. We're not worried. We're not afraid. And as soon as the musicians and dancers and worshiping started, amazingly, as soon as they started worshiping you, and forgetting about all these troubles that they thought they had, you took care of everyone else who was attacking them. Completely laid them out <laughs> in the Valley of Berica. Tons of bodies dead, tons of plunder for the taking. You stopped everything in its path. As soon as the people stopped trying to be in control, stopped worrying about things, humbled themselves before you that you would take care of things and then worshiped you with the knowledge that you would do as you said. Hmm. How many of us need to put that on a to-do list every single day? Don't be afraid. Don't panic. God's got this. Quit wasting your time and energy and efforts worrying about something that God is going to take care of when you could do things besides that. God, I am so sorry that we actually probably do have to have that on a to-do list. Our hearts just don't seem to settle in the fact of trust. And that's so incredibly not fair to you because you've never done anything not to deserve our trust, but we apply earthly filters to you. We've had people cheat on us and lie to us and not do what they say. But God, you are our God. You have never lied to us. You only want what is good for us. You will take care of us and protect us. And you promise to always love us and never leave us. We need to quit being afraid and quit panicking and be quiet and let you take over. In your son's name I pray. Amen.